All right, here he is. What do you love about writing? What do I love about writing? I, you know, honestly, I think that it's, it's alchemy. Alchemy. It's, it's alchemy. Look, man, there's this tattoo on my finger and my hand. 26. It's the number 26. 26 letters in the English alphabet. Everything you've ever written, everything you've ever read is a simple combination, a reworking of those same 26 letters. And, those, and, and depending upon the sequence, can change somebody's life. Alchemy. Like, that excites me every day. Yeah, well, when did it become, I'm a good storyteller? When I was like 25. It took a while for me because I never wanted to write novels. I always felt like they were, I didn't like to read them as a kid. I, I, they were intimidating to me. Um, I struggled with them. And so I had an editor, my very first editor when I was 21. I got signed at Harper when I was like 20, 21 for poetry. And, um, wow. and my editor, Joanna Kotler, who... Took a liking to me, introduced me to the children's world. She's the one who said that this is going to be YA. And I used to be like, I don't understand why this isn't for adults. I look back now and it's because I was a young adult, right? I, I naturally was younger. So you weren't trying to be YA. No. The editor noticed. I was young. I was 21. This is going to fit for this. Yeah. This is a, he's a kid. He's 21. His tone is naturally bent to a younger audience because he is a younger audience. He is a younger person. And so she categorized me as young adult. And this book comes out, a book that I collaborated with my dear friend Jace, Jason Griffin, my college roommate. And we made this thing. And in that process, she said, she taught me story arc. In the process of making this book, she's like, I'm going to teach you how to like create arc. And I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And she's like, I know, but I'm going to show you. She said, because one day you're going to write novels. I said, no, I'm not, because I don't have the education for it. And she said, oh, don't worry. Your intuition will take you farther than your education ever will. And so at 25, 26 is when I began. Christopher Myers, who you know, I think. Do you know Chris Myers? You know Walter Dean Myers, the OG. Like, he wrote Monster. He wrote a lot of these books from, from you. It would have been your generation's children's books. Monster from Monster. Senyika Shakur. Monster, no. No, no, no. Not Monster Cody. Monster from... They just did a movie. Uh, I think Tony Lewis Lee just did a movie about the, 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 about this book, and it's, it was the first book about like a kid in the court system, okay, and and if he's innocent or not, and how the the court system works when it comes to young black boys. But he wrote a bunch of. He wrote. He's the dude who wrote the Young Landlords, which eventually became the television show Two Two Seven. Okay, okay, right? okay. His son Christopher Myers, who's a brilliant artist in his own right and writer in his own right, is one of my best friends, and he's the one who sort of challenged me to write a novel based on the fact that his father, who had been doing the very work I'm doing now for 30 years before me, uh, was getting older. And he was like, hey, somebody got to pick that mantle up. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And I wrote When I Was the Greatest, standing at the cash register of the clothing store I worked at <laughs> in Soho, <laughs> in New York City way. You know? What was that, Lord and Taylor? Rag and Bone. Rag and Bone. I when they were Rag young, Bone. when they were new company. Love Rag. I managed that I store. Think, I think this. I think yeah, these are rag and bone <laughs> pants. Yeah, I love man. rag and bone. Yeah, man. I didn't know you were there. Um, everybody who comes here, ask them what does being black mean to you, mm. and where does it show up in the work? And it's very much a part of your work. It is. You know, uh, for me, I think that being black. Man, it's everything, man. I, it's so funny because the older I get, I almost feel like people are trying to pull me away. People are trying to say, like, well, you're, it can't be your identity. Blackness can't be it. And I'm like, mm, but it can. Why not? Yeah. Like, I love the fact people are like, are you, are you, you call yourself a writer who happens to be black or a black writer? A black writer. I'm totally, I'm totally good with that. Like, I think um, knowing what I know, having the mother that I have and the stories that come out, out of that woman... Uh, having the history that I have, man, I feel like a giant every day of my life. A giant. Blackness, 
I think that the way blackness, the way the way that blackness is sort of, um, uh, the way people bump up against blackness, it could either make you feel small or it could make you feel mega. Uh, and for me, it makes me feel massive in the world. Massive. No matter what we go through, I feel like a giant because I feel like I am the product of resilience. I'm survivors. Right? And not just survivors. We, we've thrived. Thrived. Right? And uh, I feel like I got two vertebrae, born with two backbones. That's how I truly feel, man. And so how does it show itself in my work? It's everywhere. And it's, it, it shows itself so much in my work that I never, I rarely have to even say that the characters are black. It is the default. And the way that we think about white default in most literature, there's so many people who come to me and say, like, yo, your work defaults black. Mm. And to me, that's the real work, right? That's the real gift. I ain't got to say these people black. They default black. They default black. Imagine a world where characters, where, where kids can read books and be like, yeah, they default black. Mm. Instead of defaulting white, mm. to me that's like, hey, if I could if I could leave that behind, it's like, shh. you're kind of relating to how I think about it in terms of. I feel like I stand on the shoulders of the people who came before us, from the freedom fighters of all sorts to the creative writers who you know fuel oh, my direct path to mm -hmm. you know my father and mother. Um, but you feel very tangibly that you are standing on people's shoulders and they have lifted you up into a space and you have to give something back or at least be mindful yes. of those who have lifted you up. Yes. Um, and all, all of that. And, and that's not a burden. That's a blessing. Right? That's a gift. I'm glad that I, I'm glad to be held accountable I don't look at it as this weird oppressive thing like you should be able to do what you want. I do do what I want because of who I'm held accountable to. They made it so, right? They made it so. It is disrespectful for me not to do what I want because they're the ones who paid the price for me to have that freedom to do so. Now, does that mean that, they, that I'm going to be, a, that, 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 the, that the pearly gates will be open for me to do everything I want to do? No, there's struggle there still. But my job is to attempt to do so that the generation coming after me knows, oh, no, nah, no, nah, we could do what we want. We can make what we want. We could be who we want, right? Like, I, I owe it to them. How many books are in the can right now? Because uh, you just dropped your 16th today. January, Boy. January. There's another one called you, "Ain't Burned All the Bright" that comes in January. You have another one that's coming out in so number seventeen is coming out in, in January. January, and then there's a picture book sometime next year, and there's an adult novel sometime next year. Um, <laughs> so we, you know, we so there's two more fully fleshed out. Like the picture book, let's say that's a little bit different, right? Cause mm -hmm. It's a different challenge. Mm -hmm. But there's two more books that are done. The adult novel's not done. It's coming. I mean, I'm in, I'm in process. Ain't Burned All the Bright is in the can. Like, it's it's done. It's on its way out. January. The adult novel, if I can get it done by a certain time, then we can, we can make it. Well, now, after doing, what, 14 or 15 YA novels, mm -hmm. why did you finally say, okay, let's do an adult novel? Didn't want to. Just didn't work for kids. I wrote it for kids. And my editor was like, hey, Love it, but in order for me to, in order for us to edit it so that it works for kids, I'd, I'd have to ruin it. So this one is a, this one you're going to have to jump. You're going to have to make that jump because it just doesn't. It's about a mouthless child, right? It's about a boy born without a mouth, and it's this whole story about that, right? And 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 she's like, look, I love this, but it's it just doesn't work in the space for this particular space. You're gonna you're gonna have to sort of take that take that leap and move up. Which is fine. I just write stories, brother. I wasn't, you know, for me, it's like, this is what I got. Does it work for this space? It doesn't work for this space. Cool, we'll take it up. And so... We'll, we'll so this was not supposed to be a no. YA, an adult novel. No. But it is. And we'll, and so I, now, so when she said, okay, this is an adult novel, did you then have to go in and change it? To yeah. Yeah. Because even though it wasn't for kids, it wasn't quite there for adults. I needed to figure out, I had to go back and sort of tap into a different level of, even just on the line level, right? Even just on the line, like figure, like really make sure that, um, basically I was able to, to run amok in a different way, right? Like 
writing for young people has a certain kind of constraint that allows for a particular kind of freedom, right? So like what happens is people say like, I don't like restraints. The poet knows that restraints is what gives them the freedom to do whatever they want to do. But you've got to have a boundary. And, and children's literature gives you that boundary in a way that I think most of us don't actually exploit in the way we should, right? You have the boundaries there to really run amok within the fence, within that boundary, which gives you the ultimate kind of freedom and creativity. Because you've got to be creative. You have to be creative. Does it make you nervous? Like What, the adult you, space? You, well, no, yeah, yeah. Like, you've been super successful. Mm hmm in this realm, you know, as a welterweight or whatever the case mm -hmm. may, you know, a middleweight, whatever you want to call it. No, I'm a heavyweight. Now, well, you know, <laughs> well, well, yeah, you're going into a different now, class. A different class. I'm, yeah. It's a different weight class. Not mm -hmm. necessarily better, or work, but it's a different weight class. You're compared against different people. Yes. You know, I made my name over here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, tons of awards and lots of respect over here. Mm -hmm. Have not been in this alley before. Right. Does it scare me? Yeah, sure. Sure, but not because of... Um, I, I, the only thing that scares me is that I won't I let myself down. I ain't worried about it. I got a chip on my shoulder the size of the moon. Always been there, right? And so this is my moment to say what I've been trying to say for years, which is I choose to write for children. It's not that I don't have the ability to write for adults. And I think, and you've been around this industry, man, I think sometimes we get, people look at children's literature as lesser mm -hmm. literature, and it's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for the work that we do, Torrey don't exist. Right? We build the reader and the writer. Sure. These are the books that are foundational, right? Sure. And so, and no one would sleep on Judy Bloom. No one would sleep. Judy like, Bloom was a on. legend. We, we, come on, we talk about Raul Dahl and all that. these people. Raul Dahl is so on. important. Exactly. And so, I, this is my moment to say what I've been trying to say for a long time, which is this is a choice. I choose to stay in this category. I find it fulfilling. I find it rewarding, right? I love, I love children, but also it's a choice. I can do what I want to do. I mean, I've written shorts and all kinds of things. I mean, I'm in all kinds of collections of short stories that are adult, that are literary fiction. I have no problem with it, right? Is it, is it a different calibration? Do I have to rework and re-sort of train myself in certain ways because there is so much space now in the adult world, right? I, I, I got to paint, paint the Mona Lisa with half the palette when I'm working with young people, for young people. Now I get a full palette, but I'm used to sort of using a half, half the palette and, and mixing colors to find out how to make the Mona Lisa look like the Mona Lisa. Now I got every color in the world, and that's daunting. That's a different thing, right? I got to figure out, now I got to be a little more, a little more, like, it's almost like too much freedom, too much space. Uh, you can get a little lost in yourself. You can become a little masturbatory. You know, I, who, who likes a navel gazer? Which so much lit fig is. And so I'm just trying to sort out where I am. I'm, I, you know, and not overthink it. I know me. I know who I am. I know my voice. I've worked very hard to develop it. And so why should I even go too far away from what I know? I fi I'll find it. You know, I find it. Can I say, look, and I'm working with Kathy Bell.